I just about made enough money to keep going. Then I took the plunge and Crep Select has more than worked just because I didn't give up. I was always seen as a Dell boy, but I'm actually Lawrence from Crep Select. Early doors I was buying trainers from TK Maxx and reselling them for like 30, 40 pounds on top. I was customising trainers ages ago. I used to put Swarovski crystals on K-Swiss. Lewisham is my home. I'm proud of being from there. It's moulded me to who I am. And now I'm officially a part of Blue Borough. My first job was Sainsbury's, which is two shops away from my current spot. Obviously I got sacked for waffling and trying to serve people, which is not what they want. My career in fashion retail started at Chapter 3, which was on Lee High Road. That was the place to go to get a one-away outfit. It was ahead of its time in terms of clothes. I did events promoting in the night. My biggest event was called Love Shy. I also went to uni. I used to do the most. I didn't even used to sleep. Bag of Menswear was a small shop which I ran, but there was a large website running with it. I saw the potential in what the internet and what websites would become. At this time as well, I was doing eBay and I also worked for Sports On Screen, which is owned by Andy Anser, who was my mentor then and he still is now. It's a sports modelling agency where I worked with loads of like world famous footballers and some massive campaigns. On the 2010 Nike advert for the World Cup, I managed to actually sell a Canada Goose coat to the director, which obviously shouldn't happen and doesn't happen, but Del Boy striked again. Yoke Menswear in the Whitgift Centre was the maddest lesson ever. Basically, UK music came from Croydon. If you think about Stormzy, Crepton Conan, Section Boys, they were all our customers and they were a massive part of my learning about Instagram and social media. We was hit by the Croydon riots where Croydon basically burned down. The shop was completely looted, but it gave me my through ball to learn how to run a business from the ground up. When I had no shop and I was operating out of a big yellow, that was an all time low, but the biggest test to show whether I could still sell. So I knew if I managed to get the shop in the right spot, it would work. I managed to open Crep Select on a shoestring budget with my best friend James. He was the builder, I was the vision. Up until probably a few weeks after opening, I still didn't know if it would work. But obviously through this period, I'm still trying to find all the most exclusive shoes. The name of the business is Crep Select, so I needed to find the Creps. I spent way more than I made. Some of the highlights today, I'm officially sponsored by Bel Air, which I never saw coming. We was obviously part of Shiro Story episode one. Big up rap man. We've done loads of music videos. The stage we're at now, the music I actually listen to and love are the customers I have. A lot of the best people in the game phone me and say what you got, I'm coming through, and it isn't forced. Obviously the shoes being so rare and hype has made it happen, but the atmosphere and the relationship with them is more genuine than a lot of other shops. They leave happy, shout me out, and always come back. Kenny Allstar did his own biography, similar to what we're doing. I wasn't in it for very long, but it shows you genuinely a lot of these people that are doing super well want to be a part of what I'm doing, and it, it, means, it means a lot. I've also been put in the Soul Seekers film, where I sort of played the evil reseller. At the end of the day, there's other hustles that are worse, illegal. As long as no one gets hurt, if you get up early enough, you'll get the shoe. It was still a massive moment for my brand. And big up Emil, and hopefully it will be out soon on Netflix. I've recently done a massive Christmas advert with Visa. But when I got the first email about the Visa Christmas advert, I'm thinking, nah, they, they think I'm another shop. They don't actually know that I'm in Lewisham selling Yeezys, why is that Christmassy? But as the time went on and I met a few people and they were asking like, how I look and can I sing, I started to see what they saw. Because trainers are not just for the kid who's on his bicycle cycling around an estate. Now it's everybody. 90% of the population saw it before Christmas. And I wangled the Crep Select hat, which wasn't easy, but it slid through. Come in, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Fight night, Lawrence, you're on, man. The reposts of people watching it, I know probably people are a bit sick of hearing it. Obviously, I'm not a singer. The genuine love that people had for me doing it was crazy. 
A big part of the success was being present at all the big trainer events. Crep City was a massive part of my beginning and it's still part of me now. SneakerCon coming to the UK is the biggest trainer event in the world. I've been at all of them. A new event that I'm part of is Table Bay. They're doing things different, but the vibe's mental. Our Snapchat is actually as epic as the Insta, which is run by Erty. He's the manager of the store. And the Snapchat obviously has a younger demographic. It's unprofessional, but you can't really compare to our Snapchat. It's probably the best shop Snapchat in the world. The shop is sort of becoming part of the community more than just like a supermarket. It gives people the confidence to come in and just look. But obviously if they are buying, they know they're going to come in, get good service. They're going to hear the latest music, might see their rap hero buying something. The community, especially locally, they're a part of it. They help protect it. This is like a family. I would never have imagined how big the name has got. Like when people come in and they're saying, oh yeah, I've driven two hours from Ipswich to buy shoes. I'm, I'm thinking, well, surely they were somewhere closer, but they want to be a part of it. They've been looking at it on Instagram for a year or they're on the Snapchat. If you're into street culture, we are the magnet. A big, from the heart, thank you for everyone that's helped. The people that have helped me along the way, it's been epic. A lot of people have done a lot of things for no money or very little money to help the brand build. And I've just turned the corner now where I can finally give back to those people or bring them in on something else or help them with their plan. It's all go and the growth is basically just started, especially as a brand. 2019, it's a steroid team. And Birmingham, we're coming. <laughs>